Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial, and today we're going to do some After Effects Q&A. So I like to put together videos every once in a while addressing some of these questions. Lots of them are smaller questions that won't take up an entire video, so I've got four questions I'm going to address in this video. Now if you have a question of your own, or even a tutorial request, the best place to do that is on the discussion tab of my channel or on one of these videos. But on the discussion tab then everyone knows where it's at and people can also comment back, I can comment back because I might already have a tutorial that covers one of those topics. So go to the discussion tab on my channel and ask some questions there, um, suggest some tutorials, and that's the way to do it there. Now the first question I'm going to address is creating a 3D cube. So here is a 3D cube, and if I bring up my camera tool, I can rotate around. You can see it's 3D. And this was just done using some shape layers and distributed it into 3D space. Let me show you how to do that really quick. So let's go ahead and take all of this and let's just delete that. Let's come up, grab the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to draw a square. Let me make sure it is centered. So I'm in the rectangle contents. I'm going to center this. Now let's go into my rectangle path and the size. Let's go in and make this. 400 by 400, make it nice and square. And I like to use the shape tool because then we can add different things like stroke and gradients and things like that to it later on. But for now, let's just keep it like that and let's just call this cube side. Okay, now we need, we're gonna need six of these for the cube, so let's duplicate this. So there's six of them. And now let's distribute them into 3D space. Before we do that, we need to turn them all into 3D. So I just checked all of those boxes. I'm gonna highlight them all, hit P on the keyboard, and let's start moving these. So this one, I'm gonna go 200, minus 200. Let's go 760, 1160. And I'm just subtracting and adding 200 to these. 340 and 740. Okay, so you can see they've kind of all moved in different spots. Now these first two that are 200 and minus 200, we don't need to do anything with them, they're already just fine. Now these next two, we need to orient them the right direction. So let's change the Y rotation to 90 degrees, and on this second one to negative 90 degrees. Close these down, and then these last two, hit R on the keyboard, brings up the rotation again. And let's do the X rotation. This top one, negative 90. And then 90 for the bottom. And that is all of the cube that you need. That's everything is there. So the easiest way to work with this is to pre-compose it. So I'm going to select all of it. Command Shift C will pre-compose. Let's call this cube. And then you make it 3D, and then you hit this button that's Collapse Transformations. And so what that will do is now, even though it's pre-composed, I can move everything around as if it was a 3D layer. Really cool. So let's go in and add a camera and a light. And what I like to do to be able to see this really nice is I like to parent the light to the camera. And so then as I kind of rotate around, you can see all the different sides of this and that it is indeed a 3D cube. Now, if we wanted to add some, some different things to this, let's go into the composition. And let's come in to the contents. And let's add a stroke. Right now, the stroke is set to white. But let's go ahead and change that to black. And we'll need to do that with all of these. Okay, now that we have all the stroke black in that, I can come back into... And let's make this light a lot brighter. 
and you can see I've got this kind of black stroke effect to it that's really kind of cool. Now say I wanted to add a thick line around this to make it kind of a uh, almost like a cell shaded look. Well I can come up to the cube since it's all in one composition I can come up here now and go to layer styles and I can add a stroke to this. So let's come into the stroke make this black make it nice and thick and now you can see the look that we got going on here. So that's just a quick way of doing a 3D cube. Now, next, let's talk about some text animation. So I get a question about how to, how to work with text and text animation. So here is kind of a quick text animation. And it kind of looks like maybe the letters are being sucked up by a vacuum and they're just going crazy. And this is all done on a single text layer. And if I look into the transformations, there's no animations. All the animation is done within the text animations. And there's lots of options in here. So let's, let me show you how I did this. Let's go ahead and close this. Create a new text layer. It's a little big. So let's bring this down. Now you don't have to create the look exactly how I do it. You're going to want to go in and mess around yourself and kind of figure out a new way of doing things. So, but here I have the text. It's called text animation. So I'm going to come in here. Right there it says text and it says animate. I'm going to click on that. And the first thing I'm going to do is enable per character 3D. And as you can see, now there's little bounding boxes around each letter and it lets me move these letters individually. Let's come back in here and let's do all transform properties. And what this is going to do is it's going to let me animate these things. And you'll get it in a second here. If you've never done this, it might be a little bit confusing. But here's a range selector. And this range selector shows me from what point to what point is being affected by these properties. So let's go all the way to 100. And what I want to do to create that kind of that look of the vacuum look is I'm going to first do move the position down. Let's go to 120 and then move the anchor point the same 120. Now let's go in to the rotation. I'm going to hit, it's going to hit one full rotation of each of them. And then let's move the position way up high and maybe a little bit forward. So now what's going to happen, you can see they're kind of crazily flying out of here. Now if I go into the advanced settings of the range selector, it says units based on characters. I want to do characters excluding spaces. Okay. Now I just need to simply keyframe the start and end point in the range selector. So keyframe the start. Let's move forward. Bring that to 100. And let's turn on motion blur. And what we have here is a crazy kind of being sucked up by a vacuum cleaner animation. Okay, so that's text animation. So go through here. There's lots of options here. If you haven't played around with text animations, I highly recommend it. Lots of cool stuff you can do there. So next, let's talk about doing a reveal. And so this was a question I got asked. Someone emailed me and said, I want to do a simple text reveal from behind a line. And this looks simple enough, and, but if you've never done it before, it might get a little bit confusing on how to do that. So let me show you how to do that. And there's a couple ways to do it, but I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to hide all of these layers. And let's create a new line. Okay, I'm just using a shape layer. And I'm going to come into the transform, make sure it's centered. Okay. Now, first thing I want to is reveal this. And so I'm going to select it. And if it's a shape layer and you want to add a mask to it, you actually have to do one little button. And up here, you have to click on that button. And then you can actually mask a shape layer, as you can see. 
So I'm going to go forward to where I want it revealed, hit the mask path, and I'm going to hit page up on my keyboard, and it moves back frame by frame. And now I'm going to move this mask off. And you can see that's a quick way to mask on. Now, let's do the text. So I'm just text tool, text reveal. And I'm going to have it start down here. Let's make sure everything is nice and aligned, centered. So I'm going to hit P on the keyboard, keyframe the position. And here's the two ways to do it. I can either take this layer, pre-compose it, and mask the bottom of it, or I'm going to come in here, grab the shape tool, deselect it so I can make a shape, and I'm going to just draw a shape right there, and then use it as a track mat. So I'm going to switch over to modes, and then right here on this text layer reveal 2, I'm going to click here and alpha inverted mat. And then what it's going to do is it's going to hide basically everything of that text layer that's covered up with this layer. So that's an easy way of doing that. So that's a text reveal behind a line. Now the last tip I'm going to go over, somebody had asked about how to do growing glowing lines from one point to another. And so this is something really quickly I came up with. And it's really simple to do. So what it is is just a shape layer. So I can grab my pen tool, make sure I'm not selected in any layer, because if it's selected, then it's a mask tool. If it's not selected, then it's a shape tool. So I'm going to just draw a line. And I'm not going to I'm not going to finish it off. Come to the contents. Let's go to the fill, delete the fill. Now let's go into the stroke, and let's make it whatever width we want. I'm going to also come down here to the line cap, and let's make it round. So it's not flat, it's round. Now in order to make that grow, I just need to select the shape, go into Add, and come down to Trim Path. And I can just simply animate the end. So let's go ahead and animate the end, and there is a growing line. Now if we want to make this um, glowing, well we can, a couple of different things we can do. So let's just go up to Effect, Stylize Glow, and this is going to give it a nice little glow to it. I can also come into the shape layer, duplicate it. Let's take the bottom layer, go to the stroke, and let's change the color. Kind of a pink. Now let's come up to the top layer, to the stroke, and let's maybe bring it in a little bit. I can also take this layer as well, add a blur to it. And then we got kind of a different look. Still the same thing, it's just going to grow like a line like that. So that's the After Effects Q&A. If you've got some questions or some tutorial requests, please go ahead and go to my channel, go to the discussion tab, and ask them there. And that'd be a good spot for everyone to be able to see the questions, because some of these questions other people might have some answers to right away before I have a chance to do a video on them. Or I might already have a tutorial on that topic, and then I can just post there and link you straight to them. Thank you so much for watching this video, and thanks for being a part of the community. See you next time.